Ever want to play a JRPG and think, man, I really don't want to play something that's going to take over a hundred hours today, and I also don't want to play something that isn't a cutscene slog and or an elongated tutorial for the first five hours. I want to get into some fun, turn-based battles right here, right now. Well, dear America, you can, and you can still have great combat in addition to a unique aesthetic and fun dialogue and it's being done by a developer who has been around for a while making similar games. This Way Madness Lies is another entry by Z-Boyd Digital Entertainment, but you also might know them by Z-Boyd Games and a little old indie darling on Steam called Cthulhu Saves the World. They had to change their name allegedly due to tax purposes, but otherwise it's about the same people and they're still making the same type of games. A short but sweet comedy JRPG with a distinct theme. This way, Madness Lies is no different. Instead of Cthulhu and its mythos, you've got Sailor Moon-inspired high school teenagers fixing the world of Shakespeare from evil nightmare forces. But the most interesting thing about the game is that it's a JRPG but without all of the fat and filler, making for an exceptionally paced game that's really engaging and fun. It manages to be a shorter JRPG by cutting out almost all the buildup you get in a typical story. There's no setup to the girls getting their powers, there's no extensive tutorial, there's no time spent building up tons of motivation for all the characters, all over for what would be probably the span of hours in a typical JRPG. There's also no hub world, store, or any of that. Items have a set use per battle, but you gain them back once the battle is over, so there's no backtracking, at least in that sense. It's sort of like watching a television show midway into Season 3 without watching the seasons prior but it's written in a way where it works because the plot isn't to be taken seriously here and the continuity really doesn't matter. We don't need to know how or why these girls got their powers or why they're fighting in Shakespeare plays because it doesn't really matter. The developers want you to get into the game, have fun, and figure out that stuff later. The gameplay is your typical turn-based RPG combat system but with some fun sound bites and fast-paced gameplay. Enemies have weaknesses, there's a row system for your characters that attack on rotation, there's team-up moves with different girls having different chemistries with one another, and combos to utilize those moves. Many abilities are one-time use, or at least one-time use until you hit the recharge button, which takes an entire turn, but it's all typical stuff, nothing exactly revolutionary here, but it's greater than the sum of its parts. There's a surprising amount of depth for how quick you're getting into this game. There's nothing about this game that is unnecessary, convoluted, frustrating, or boring. And the difficulty options account for various levels of challenging play. It's an absolutely no-nonsense, zero-fat, cut-to-the-chase game. You can simply initiate a battle at any time, making grinding as painless as possible. In that sense, the game is constantly moving forward with great pacing and the combat is really fun and it still maintains this brisk pace while also having meaningful progression like you'd expect in an RPG. In between your typical dungeons, which are essentially Shakespearean plays that are just altered a little bit, there are little scenarios to keep the gameplay fresh and interesting by changing things up, such as leaving you with less party members or cutting out the dungeon part entirely and just giving you a straight string of battles. This is all led by great music and sound bites throughout your playthrough. It's not only engaging mechanically, but audibly too. Even if the dialogue and story aren't to your liking, you can skip through all of it, but I did enjoy it enough not to. The most important thing I can say about this game is that it's worthy of your time, and that's saying a lot for the JRPG genre. Many try to do what This Way Madness Lies does in a sense, that is hooking you on gameplay alone at the start, but many struggle to do this and still manage to demand 40 plus hours of your time to waste much of it on incessant cutscenes, nagging tutorials, and insufferable character interactions if you're really unlucky. This Way Madness Lies aims for under 10 hours and gives you a compelling experience from the start, which is something I'm very grateful for. I want to play more of it, but I really enjoyed what I've played so far, and for 10 bucks, it's hard to not recommend. Give it a look. Thank you guys for watching. This is part of our year in review series where we just quickly cover games that I've had an interest in, but I haven't had time to play them this year, so that's why it's a little bit fast. It's not based on my first impression style videos, which are a lot longer, more in-depth, and we don't have nearly as much time in these types of games as we do in our first impressions videos. For this game, we played it a lot less. Now, we're going to be rounding this out with my top five best and worst games of 2022 near the end of the year. So, 
stay tuned for that. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. I'll see you next time. I'm out.